dear ladies and gentlemen, I will speak fast. So this is the presentation that is uh, devoted to the um, place of surgery in uh, the treatment of sarcoma of both bone and soft tissue. I won't surprise you by uh, telling that it's a rare type of tumor, but uh, they are very diverse. It's uh, approximately 150 types of sarcomas of white tissue, uh, of soft tissues, the, uh, and also the bones. When we speak about such heterogeneous group of tumors, we should understand that the morphological subtype is of great importance when we choose treatment modalities. For a number of uh, tumors, especially low grade, I mean uh, low malignization potential, uh, surgery can be the only treatment when we, spe when we choose the volume or combination of methods, we also should take into account the functional outcomes after uh, a manipulation or impact. Also, uh, it will um, determine the treatment uh, strategy. When we speak about the volume of surgical intervention, we should first of all understand the navigation means, also the uh, extension um, or ad advancement, or just the growth of um, uh, tumor as well as the growth zone, the cortical zone, uh, whether the tumor is adjacent to all these structures, skeletal uh, distribution, as well as the critical adjacent, being adjacent to critical structures such as vessels and uh, joints, and only after a no adjuvant chemotherapy, we assess the effect of it. That is why all these um, concepts have not been changed or modified for quite long. When we speak about secondary changes or malformations in the uh, bones, we take into account whether it is solitary, whether it is associated with pathological fracture, or uh, whether uh, the, uh, we can suspect pathological fractures in the future. If it is not a bearing bone, then surgical intervention will come second, and the dominating uh, treatment will be conservative treatment of the primary tumor. And then it is multidisciplinary team, which will be absolutely mandatory to understand whether surgery will be needed further. As of now, the, um, I would say that uh, uh, the hands of surgeries are quite free. And it's not about the resection and whether it is operable or not. It's uh, reconstruction and also whether we can replace everything, whether total replacement is possible. When we speak about reconstructive surgery of bones, allocrafted composite um, uh, prosthesis, module uh, prosthesis are used, modular prosthesis, and also individual uh, and the, um, the total uh, just prosthesis with different mechanisms are used. At the moment, we can do the replacement no, not only of bone tissues, but also soft tissues, and that there are different uh, plastic surgeries with flaps and synthetic materials. And also, uh, all this is applied quite actively. For example, we can use reconstruction of the bones of soft tissue. For example, here, uh, you can see patella as the place where we um, uh, fix the uh, prosthesis, and also we have good functional outcomes. If we speak about vascular, in growth, then it's not a big problem at the moment uh, because today we can also replace vessels by different methods. Uh, here, for example, we used uh, the flap of the uh, great uh, subcutaneous vein, and F, uh, as there is a huge growth of the soft tissue, you know, we replaced also the defect quite successfully of the uh, femoral artery by means of a uh, greater subcutaneous vein. We can restore both soft tissue vessels and bones, exactly what we see here, because extra articular resection with the resection of main vessels and further uh, total replacement. So what will happen earlier? Some limits for the surgeons or the uh, uh, just the um, we will become more reasonable in our choices. So the patient who comes, um, uh, who is faced with a rare tumor, uh, we subject him to the methods which are quite available in this or that setting. He will be operated on up to the very last chance, or will he undergo chemotherapy 
which is available in the setting, and if the setting has poor surgeons but good uh, um, chemotherapists, uh, so they will be balancing between these uh, two departments. I suppose that sarcoma should be treated in tertiary reference centers, which are equipped with completely full set of means and uh, treatment modalities and multidisciplinary team, who will also uh, they will also, should also include rehabilitologists who uh, will uh, provide good functional outcome. When we speak about resection and reconstruction, then a lot depends on the biology of the tumor and also on the use of different constructions and uh, structures which will uh, use, uh, which will uh, influence um, the uh, treatment outcome in the long and in the short term. So, for example, we also have 3D printing at the moment, which gives us huge opportunities. Uh, previously, we had Stena, which allowed us to replace defects of bones with the use of growing and the prosthesis, as well as the uh, have uh, turnkey solutions, especially for pediatric patients and other companies who also released individually tailored uh, and the prosthesis for the uh, hand, for, uh, for example, as well as the surgery of the pelvic um, of the pelvis required certain uh, targeted solutions, but it's, it was very expensive and quite long. And now let's look at how drastically everything changed with the 3D printing. 3D printing, in fact, is a revolution which allowed us to receive completely unique solutions. And uh, initially it was started as stereolithography, then it evolved in the selective laser melting which allows us to uh, have absolutely unique um, goods from titanium to titanium powder uh, using mathematical models. You can see the um, absolutely brave ideas starting from uh, minute uh, needles to massive structures replacing part, partially the, the whole pelvis. We use 3D technologies, for example, for the pelvic ring replacement, which allows us uh, to have good uh, functional outcome, especially when we can restore the uh, auto structures. For example, we had certain problems with the uh, videos. Uh, please uh, start this video. That's 15 months post-surgery. Okay. You can see brilliant functional uh, outcomes after resection of the pelvic ring with the restoration of uh, all, the, um, all the structures. It's just like in the case of peripheral bones uh, impairment, there are certain solutions to replace the defect of the elbow joint with good functional outcomes. And also, when we speak about such difficult resections, then uh, we should understand that it's not always uh, it, it's not always uh, something that we plan. And there are risks actually, which are related to bulky defects, very difficult configurations of the wounds and the implants. Uh, usually, we have uh, alien. Uh, structures inside which uh, increase the risk of infectious complications which actually can be reflected in literature sources. So you can see the complications rate after the pelvic reconstructive surgery from 18 to 65 percent. It depends on the uh, implant, it depends on the comorbidities and on the um, volume of replacement. So you should be quite reasonable in assessing the uh, prospect. Sometimes it is resection without reconstruction. This is an example when the patient uh, was operated on by Georgi 40 years ago, and the patient uh, actually uh, had chondrosarcoma of the pelvis. Uh, the, this patient had good, uh, absolutely good life. and. Uh, that was a very good outcome, actually, and uh, this uh, gentleman, he had children and uh, uh, even grandchildren and great-grandchildren now. So uh, sometimes um, and the replacement can be related to uh, risks for the patient. For example, here we had resection uh, because of the chondrosarcoma of the pelvis without 
uh, reconstruction, reconstructive stage. And now you can see the patient uh, started walking. After that, he was mobilized. And later on, the patient ha uh, has no relapses. And the patient actually doesn't want to undergo reconstruction. He is happy with the functional outcome. And he uh, continues living without reconstructive surgery with quite good functional outcome. And we should not forget about the fact that in sur surgery of primary tissue, of primary tumor, is not the end of it. There is a brilliant experience from our colleagues, thoracic surgeons, Professor Levchenko, on isolated gamma perfusion of the lung with uh, uh, removing metastases. There was 42 metastases and 28 um, on one side and the other, uh, respectively, and the patient actually um, is alive with good functional outcome. We should not forget that it is a multidisciplinary approach. And um, I very frequently quote from Musha Shane, a beautiful um, a surgeon who wrote about common sense of um, abdominal surgery. Sometimes surgeons must be stopped because they uh, get carried away. And the uh, time actually flies, and not only surgery at the moment is the paramount um, modality and the golden standard of treatment. And the works that uh, were published quite long ago, they recommend, uh, and also there is a consensus that, for example, um, surgery of uh, fibromatosis and uh, type aggressive fibromatosis should uh, be postponed and the active uh, follow-up this is what we do as first stage and if there is unfavorable zone uh, if there is no progression of disease fibromatose of dysmoid type or dysmoid tumors. This is the pathology that should not be operated on uh, immediately. And if there is progression, if it is life-threatening, if there is high functional uh, deficiency, then we apply different methods. But first and foremost, this is follow-up and observation. Also, there are brilliant, beautiful publications, uh, for example, on the uh, giant cell tumor, uh, tenosynovial and the application points for systemic therapy, which we find nowadays, sometimes allow us to avoid surgery per se. This is a beautiful case, which we looked at ASCO, and there is a publication of 2019. This is a case of full recovery of a, a newborn with NTRK fusion, um, sarcoma, fibrosarcoma, and um, surgery was not resorted to, and it would have been disabilitating dis uh, for a child. So sometimes revision, uh, total replacement, or reversion surgery, generally onco-orthopedics, and uh, many other situations which are related to the heterogeneity or heterogenic nature of these tumors. It's quite difficult to choose the treatment modality in a particular case. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to, uh, to also the difficulty is related to the um, uh, complex and the prosthesis that we use or complex implants. But the team is utterly important. It's the team that takes part in the decision strategy development, decision making and strategy development. Our brilliant team of experts from all over the world, I suppose, will make everything possible. You can see the poster for the last year and unofficial poster for this year. I suppose we're exactly the brotherhood who should continue studying sarcomas, looking into our opportunities and taking decisions together. We shall continue our agenda. Thank you.